All right, hello everyone. I was asked to do a tutorial on creating the moon and flood image, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, so to start, <clears throat> excuse me, I opened my sky overlay and just find it here. I think I used number eight. Yeah, that looks about right. So I just opened that up in Photoshop and then I place embedded uh, my image that I'm going to use, which is this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and place. Um, so it just makes it an object on top and it creates an extra layer here. Um, so then I go ahead and hold the shift key and drag the corner and that just makes it so it stays the same proportion. If I don't hold the shift key, then I can change and warp the baby and that's not really what I like. So I'll just undo that. Holding the shift key, I'm gonna resize, oops, resize the baby. That's what I like here. Move them up a bit. I just decreased the opacity a little bit so I can see where he's going to sit on the clouds and I think I wanted to cover up the cloud there when I did it. So press enter and I lock him in and then increase the opacity again. Um, so this is really easy. So all I do is create a layer mask here at the bottom of my screen. There we go. And I take my brush tool here. I make sure I have black as my foreground color. Increase the opacity to 100%. And I'm using my Wacom tablet. It makes life a million times better. Um, and all I do is paint. So I do rough outline at first. And I'm just going to take away all the extra backdrop that I don't want. Um, there we go. So I'm going to show you roughly so you don't have to watch for 20 minutes while I do it. It did take me approximately 20 minutes to do this image. So obviously you're going to do much better masking when you do it. I'm just showing you very, very roughly. There we go. And you do it on your own. Like you can, what I do is I zoom in make my brush smaller, I make it harder, and then you can brush off and on. So I want this part to come back here. So I'll kind of um, anyway, you get the idea. So you're gonna spend, this is what the biggest part of the job is here, is masking. your layers on and off. And there's other ways to do this. You could select it and that sort of thing, but this is just the method that I prefer because I find the selection to be hit or miss in terms of the edges and whether it looks cut and pasted. This way I can create soft edges. Um, the feathering does work. Um, sometimes I do that, it just depends on my mood, but this is just a quick way of doing it. Super easy for anyone. Okay, so that's just a really quick masking job. We don't, I don't really care about the bottom because I'm going to make it flooded anyways. But Okay, so we'll go with that for now. So what I typically do, because you need a flattened image um, for the flood plugin to work properly, is I save a copy at this point so that um, I have my masking, so if I later notice that I forgot something, I can easily just go back to the other image um, and remask it, and I don't have to do everything again. So at this point, file, save as, and I usually will just put the file name as um, layers or something so that it cues me that it has the layers I would need for masking. So I go ahead and flatten image, which is just a right click, flatten image, there we go. And then I'll go ahead and do the flood plugin. So I go to filter and flaming pair. So this was a download from online. And oops, 
filter flaming fair flaming pear flood and this already has all of my settings from before um, but essentially you just change the horizon to where you like to see it and I wanted mine sort of at the bottom of the moonish um, <clears throat> perspective altitude I wanted originally I didn't have the blur up and it was crystal clear in the water and it looked really bad to me so um, I brought the blur up and it made it look more realistic um, you can change the size of the ripple, all kinds of stuff in this. You can play around, um, but this is how I liked it. There was one thing I did have to change. Oh, the altitude. I liked it um, to be the water to be fairly calm and the baby to be close to it. So um, that's where you get um, the perspective that you're looking straight on at the baby versus being uh, far above the water when you're taking the photo. Um, so I'll press OK, and it'll run the action here. And there you have it. All done. So um, that's it. Feel free to ask questions. I'm happy to answer anything that comes up.